Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, was elected on July 26, 2021. Prime Minister Pierre also serves as the Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and the Youth Economy, and is the CARICOM Prime Ministerial Quasi-Cabinet Lead on Sustainable Development, including Environment, Water, and Disaster Management. The Honorable Philip J. Pierre will be sharing important remarks on the alignment of this initiative with the Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy of the Caribbean region. Welcome, Honorable Prime Minister. Let me absorb, absorb the protocol already established, but let me pay special mention to Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Morty, and the, the uh, Deputy Secretary General of, of, of the United Nations, and Dr. Carla Barnett of CARICOM. The, the Caribbean region is blessed with immense natural beauty, but it's considered to be an active area globally for natural disasters. We are told that this region is the second most disaster-prone region in the world, and our countries experience a diversity of hazards, natural, biological, and environmental. Hurricanes tend to visit our shores regularly, causing extensive damage to physical infrastructure, and sometimes nearly wiping out the entire GDP of our country in loss and damage within hours. It is reported that Hurricane Mariah's impact on Dominica was US 1.37 billion in damages. In, in Puerto Rico, it was 60 billion in damages after the passage of a hurricane. It is also known that in 2017, the 2017 hurricane season was the costliest on record with close to US 300 billion in damages. And so disaster risk reduction, mitigation, building resilience and recovery have become top priority action areas for the survival of the Caribbean states. Target G of the Sendai framework for disaster risk, risk reduction is to, and I quote, substantially increase the availability of and access to multi-hazard warning systems and disaster information and assessments to people by 2040. And note the emphasis on the word people. This is critical in the management of complex hazards, which are experienced by our Caribbean states and compounded by the negative impact of climate change. The UN General Secretary Early Warnings for All Initiative of needy focus on multi-hazards. This multi-hazard early warning system correctly places emphasis on the safety of people. Early warning systems do not only save lives, but also provide vast economic benefits. They are considered to be low-hanging fruit for climate change adaptation because they are relatively cheap in comparison to the cost of dealing with the consequences of improper planning and preparedness. We are told by the WMO that just 24 hours notice of an impending hazardous event can cut the ensuing damage percent. It is instructed global on unemployment losses of between 3 to 16 billion per annum. With hazards ranging from hurricanes, earthquakes, flooding, volcanic eruptions, health pandemics, and those related to pests and diseases on crops and livestock, there is no doubt that a multi-hazard approach is necessary, involving coordination across numeral, numeral national ministries and agencies, and also regional agencies. All effectively operating early warning systems to adjust the onslaught of hazards to which the Caribbean region is exposed. The Caribbean region must continue to implement measures to change our fortunes to become more resilient to natural disasters. Early warning systems, in conjunction with effective communication of environmental risks, is in many ways the key to impacting good social behavior and sensible actions among people. We must acknowledge that emergency management involves prevention, preparedness, response, mitigation, and recovery. However, the best disaster response is ensuring that we have the foresight to avoid it from the start or to take upfront measures to minimize the social and economic impact. The Regional Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy is a Caribbean vehicle for the implementation of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk 
uh, reduction. Priority four of the Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy, CDM, recognizes the importance of early warning systems and specifically of ensuring that it is effective at the community level so that the most vulnerable are reached. Consistent with the targeted results of the CDM strategy, the, the CDM unit, with the support of development partners, have made some significant investments in early warning systems, including governance dating back to 2014, when the model comprehensive disaster management legislation was enhanced to incorporate, to incorporate early warning system regulations. The multi-hazard early warning system checklist was revised in 2018 and fully enhanced in 2021. The checklist has been applied in seven CDMA participating states and is programmed to be applied in others. Work progressed towards the enhancement of an early warning system for the Caribbean region with the, formulation, with the formation of the Regional Early Warning Systems Consortium, REWSC, in 2017. In 2022, CDMA World Bank Regional Summary Report on Multi-Hazard multi Early Warning Checklist and Analysis in the Caribbean identified priorities for improvements, including stronger integration of science and technology into the framework, taking into consideration the emerging realities of climate change. It is evident that we have made progress over the years, but there is still more to be done. The work of CDMA has shown that participating states, the power of a regional approach to comprehensive disaster management. As such, investment in multi-hazard early warning systems remain a priority for CDMA. Participating states and is prominently featured in the CDMA Coordinating Unit Strategic Plan and Associated Work Programs for 2022 to 2027. This provides an important avenue for implementation of the early warning systems for all initiative. CDMA looks forward to playing a leading role in the implementation of the early warning system for all initiative on behalf of its participating states in line with target G of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 to 2030. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, for elaborating the context of this initiative within the framework of the Regional Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy.